what's going on everybody um if you hear some noise in the background that's our air conditioner um i'll be honest with you i record these in my room so uh if you if you've been listening since season one and you've you've noticed like season one episodes are very clear and clean cut i was recording those in the studio um a studio that's on campus when i used to go to asu and everything like that now i uh record a lot of these in my room and i'll be honest with you our air conditioner works a little too well but uh i'm not gonna com- complain right because Let's be honest, I'd rather be cold than hot, and I think a lot of people out there can't agree. However, though, one thing about a, I wouldn't say a hot room, but a warm room, I fall asleep a little bit easier. I'm not going to lie to you. When you're able to strip down to them drawers, man, and uh, you got a light blanket on you, but the bed has to already be cold because it'll counteract the, 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 warm temperature in the room you feel what i'm saying i don't know if real nappers know what i'm talking about some of y'all you know may not but um anyway man what's going on um it is currently 10 52 a.m on october 16th i think i will drop this episode next wednesday also um a quick poll do y'all like when I drop on Wednesdays or would y'all like to go back to a familiar format where I would drop on Fridays? Um, the time never changes. I always drop at noon just because I feel like that's the lunch hour. And I put all of these on YouTube so it's free. Um, I used to drop on SoundCloud and I really did enjoy that. The only thing about it was is that SoundCloud started making us pay for uploads. So you could upload to about three hours worth of content, I'm assuming. And you have to remember some of these episodes, like these very first few episodes of this podcast, used to be um, minimum an hour long. And things like that. Uh, well, you know what? Let me stop the cap. I would say the minimum's like 45 minutes. But if I get to really going or flowing, however you want to call it, uh, they can easily expand for an hour. So there's that. There's that. Um, let me be honest with y'all. So last episode, I really just now recently recalled that I said that I would tap in with the uh, situation going on, going on in Iran with the oppression of Iranian women or Iranian citizens in general. Um, I'll be honest, I forgot about it. Um, not the situation, I forgot to do my research. Let me clarify that. And I personally don't feel comfortable speaking on something that I haven't researched. So with that being said, I promise that the episode after this one I will sit down, really look into that, and, you know, not necessarily give my opinion on it because my opinion on it doesn't matter, but I just want to do some informational reporting. That way you can be aware and possibly find ways to help out the situation, right? Uh, I mean, we're all humans, so we should band together and, you know, serve humanity in a positive way you know what i mean so there's that um but i will say my thoughts and prayers go out to them and like i said once i research um the situation i can really just jump in and really start helping out and stuff like that and see what i can do also uh, another thing you should be paying attention to is the russian and ukraine war because Let me say this, when war is going on, we're all involved. Even if we're not in it directly, we're all suffering. And that's something that you should keep an eye on. 
um, you should do your research on that as well. And, you know, I encourage you to help out where you can. You know what I'm saying? Because, right, let's be honest, if you were in a catastrophic or you were in a catastrophe of a situation, you would want help too. You know what I mean? So do that. Uh, man, where do I even start? <laughs> um, let me let me let me update y'all on just what I've been up to this week. Um, so yesterday, which was Saturday, October fifteenth, um, it was my supervisor's birthday. Happy birthday to her! Um, and it was my homeboy Devonte's birthday. So shout out to D Carter. Um, but she invited me to her birthday celebration very uh honored for that you know because i didn't know you thought i was that cool but um you know cool amen on that right so man she took me to a winery uh us and a couple other uh, friendly co-workers got together and it was a blast man she took us to this winery it was cool um, very much a vibe, man. Very, very grown and sophisticated. I love things like that. Um, I just love new experiences in general. Then she took me to this other place in town. Didn't know it even exists, but um, it was in the cut. And I was like, man, this is this is a nice place. Um, we all were just sitting at the table talking. And then, boom, uh, the Alabama and Tennessee game. Saw the last seconds of that. I saw a bro make that catch to where they got it in field goal range. They were tied 49 to 49 and uh, Tennessee, oh boy, had kicked the winning field goal and man, they had stormed that field like it was the Super Bowl. You know, but moments like that, you can't do anything but just laugh and just, you know, clap it up for them because, man, let's be honest, right? Alabama has been dominating for years. So whenever you get a win over Alabama, you got to celebrate it, right? Because they've just been historically great. And it is what it is. So shout out to uh, Tennessee. Shout out Nick Saban. There was a, a couple of other games, too, that was going on. But I wasn't in the mix enough to really pay attention. Uh, but shout out college football, man. Uh, I love this time of year. Because it just brings people together. Football brings people together. Well, sports in general. Um, basketball is about to start up, so I'm happy about that. If you know me, uh, I've been on record. Historical uh, basketball fanatic. I love it. I crave it. I digest it. Um, when I have time, you know, I'll go play it. Although I haven't played in a really long time. So I need to go run some drills, get my skills back up, and uh, hit the court. Um, you know what I mean? Basketball is very stress relieving, and it's a great way to make friends and everything like that. Um, so I encourage you, whatever sport you play, you know, go play it, pick it back up, and uh, see what it do. But uh, yeah, so that was Saturday. Um, we went to Twisted Root. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a stat. I don't know if it was like the alcohol in my system because we've been drinking since two. I went from wine to liquor, so I don't know. I guess I just wasn't really hungry in my personal opinion, I guess, right? I don't know. I don't know how to analyze it. I had got the Freshman 15. It had bacon, cheese on it, and a fried egg and, like, smash fries. If I probably didn't drink before, probably would have been busting like how I was supposed to, but... I mean, I finished it because I paid for it, but it was just kind of like I was struggling. I definitely was struggling. So there's that. Um, and then we ended the night on that note. Well, let me say this. I I tapped out. Me and another friend tapped out. And um, I walked her back to the car because we were parked next to each other. And I made a new friend. So, you know, that's always cool, man. Like. I live for experiences like that, trying something new. And, you know, I was fortunate to make a new friend out of that. So uh, that's always dope, right? Um, so that was Saturday. Friday, um, 
me and my friend Bree, we went to go see um, the new Michael Myers movie. I'm not going to speak on it too much. Actually, I am. Let me stop that line. Listen, um, spoil alert. You know what I mean? I'm, I have to I have to put my opinion out there. The movie was decent. Okay, the movie was decent. Very cringy, though. Some of the writing. But, I'll be honest. Um, I think the writer and their writing style was addressing the elephant in the room. Just like how y'all are tired of these movies, I'm tired of writing this shit. And the writing, I felt, was very rushed. Um, there was a couple events in the movie that I felt like there was there wasn't enough rationale for it to be like, oh, this is why so and so did this and things of that nature. But um, I digress. Uh, it was action packed. It had a different take on everything. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, with that being said. Um, let let me say this, okay. Diversity and inclusion is a wonderful and great thing, but let me say this: when you try to force it, you know, I just think it makes for terrible writing. Well, not terrible writing, but terrible showsmanship within a movie. Because, let me say this, okay? The movie takes place in 2019. Now, granted, everybody, you know, is kind of on their own little wave in 2019, right? I mean, the kids dress different. Teenagers, adults, we all, it's different. It's just different times, right? Cool. All right, and... In 2019, just like as in 2022, we're able to express ourselves in a greater light than ever before. Cool. Through our expression of clothes, haircuts, um, just preferences, things of that nature. Let me say this, my nigga. There's no fucking way that a group of high school seniors that are in marching band should be able to bully a grown man that is the worst thing about this movie the who I thought well I don't he is a main character but he's protagonist that turns into an antagonist so he goes through this whole character development thing right well when he's the protagonist I guess or just he's in the spotlight for his parts of the movie. This nigga literally was getting punked by fucking high school seniors in marching band. Now, I'm not finna play nobody in marching band like they can't thump or whatever the case may be. But let me tell you the dynamic of this marching band group. One nigga had a mullet. The other one, I'm going to just keep it a stat. He just wasn't physically imposing enough for me. Like, as soon as he would have said something, I would have dropped my chocolate milk or groceries, whatever that nigga had, and we would have had to squat right then and there because, first of all, you're not going to press me into nothing. That's just that. Uh, and then, right so it's it's only two males in the group. The other two were females, okay? Now, granted, women thump too, right? But here's the thing. One girl, right, which this made me mad, right? Because they be doing black characters so wrong in horror movies in, gen in, horror movies in general. So it's like... She was talking, and it was just like, man, like, black women don't do that. Like, black women are in marching band, but the way she was acting, like, black women don't do that. Like, 
like she was she was trying too hard to be one of the bros and fam. I was like, nah, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, you know what I'm saying? Like, this sounds like I'm hating on marching band. I promise you I'm not. It's just that, dog, there's no way. Like, I'm going to give you the stack. The protagonist is supposed to be a killer. He's supposed to be a killer. If I'm a killer, bro, you're not finna punk me. You're not finna punk me. They could have cast way better for that. But they just wanted to make it. I guess hip and like I said the writer is telling you throughout the movie I am just as tired of this shit as y'all I promise you but I'm finna secure a bag and that is that and then the last girl was nice like she was like come on y'all don't do this don't do this don't do this like let's chill out she was nice if you gonna hang out with some ruffians Nigga, you got to commit, all right? Like, you got to commit. Like, she was the voice of reason and everything like that. She even checked up on the nigga to see if he was okay. I mean, like, half-assed because she knew, like, she couldn't show, like, too much face. But I don't know, man. Listen, if you see the movie, you're going to be like, I know I see what he, I, I can see what Ashton's talking about. You feel me? I might be tripping, but I just had to get that out there. So I guess I didn't give the movie away too much, but look, I'm going to give it a stack. It's a Halloween movie. You know who the villain is. You know what's going to happen, nigga. You know what is about to go down. And it's called Halloween Ends. It's the last movie. It's the last movie, nigga. So I'll let you decide that for yourself. Anyway, man, let's... Um Let's get into this lesson. Uh, I don't want to even say lesson. Let's just... Something I want to share with you, I guess. Budgeting. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to touch on this because I feel like we're all in a pivotal like moment. Right? So if you've been listening to me since 2020, that's really when I started all of this. Um, 2020 going all the way up to now for the podcast and hell, um, let's go to 2000, what, 17, my sophomore year when me and Zay started college antics on the radio and then we brought Gabby in the fold and, uh, we were making things work like that. Um, so I would say my audience or core group of people that have of listeners um i don't want to say fans because like mm, fans like are you really a fan nah nigga you just listen anyway so you know what i mean because fan stands for fanatic and you ain't a fanatic of this you know what i mean i hope you are I, i would love that you know what i mean and to establish a more intimate relationship with the audience and things of that nature grow closer to some people and Shit, bring some people on the show. But let's be honest. You're not a fanatic. You're a listener. And I respect that. And I appreciate you. Always appreciate anybody who gives me time and day to listen. Speaking of listeners, um, shout out Jeed. My homeboy Jeed listened to the last episode. Gave me some great feedback. Um, I'm trying to apply it now by speaking a little bit slower. Uh, I'm going to keep it a stack. Last episode, that nigga was nervous. Nigga was nervous. And you like, but nigga, you've been doing this for two years, really longer. Listen, when you get back into it, it's nerves. It's like um, playing pickup after not touching a basketball for months. You're trying to figure it out. Um, shots and opportunities that you don't take advantage of. You notice know because the IQ is always going to stay there. But, you know, when you don't practice your craft you can get rusty and it could come out quite shitty but uh, i promise y'all as we continue to go on this uh journey see what i did there my bad that was corny um as we go through this little journey man i will uh get better and i'll be back on my pivot so there's that anyway budgeting the definition an estimate of income 
exponential for a set period of time. This is the finance definition, which is what I'm referring to. All right, let's go into questions. What can a budget do for you? Well, in my personal opinion, a budget can tell you where you can cut back and where you can double down on, right? Uh, a budget can help you funnel or create a tunnel of investment, right? If so, if you're in the stocks like Robinhood or any of the uh, stock apps, you know, you can start um, getting into that. And that way, a budget can allow you to set some money aside for it, you know. And as you get paid, right, whether it's uh, monthly or biweekly or weekly, you know what I'm saying? You can um, get your hustle on and um, do what you have to do. Uh, why is it important? Well, listen, it's always important to know how much money you're, that you have coming in and how much money you're spending. And then plus better money management will allow you to um, prepare for the future. Um, prepare for sudden expenses like right car. So having an emergency fund or it just allows you to budget out for big personal purchases. Like so, for example, once upon a time, I didn't have a PS5. Um, I had to budget out for that motherfucker. Right. So. I did that, got a PS5, which is crazy, man, um, that they're just now oh so ready and available. Nigga, I had to drive to the next town over, which was like 45 minutes away to get mine from a Walmart because I just called it. And she said, yeah, we have them, but you better come here fast. Did I make that drive? You bet your ass I did. Was it worth it? Every single second. Because, boy, it was a nice, smooth morning drive, too, man. I took on a Wednesday. So, um, shout out to Walmart. But um, not only that, man, it could just help you plan for trips, right? Because, man, trips are expensive. You got to figure out where you're going to stay, how you're going to eat, and then activities. So, you definitely need to have uh, your bankroll in order. All right, moving on. Let me flip over the page, man. What insight has it? So, excuse me. Let me restate that. What insight does it give? Right? I'm sorry. I was going to read my notes. That's how I was like how I was writing them, but you're not supposed to do that. But um, what insight has it given me? Mm. Well, uh, let me say this. I've been in a, a rough spot as far as financially. Not saying I'm struggling, but it was like, I didn't know where my money was going. I have a goal of moving. And I was like, damn, I'm not really able to save anything because it seemed like shit just keep coming up. Well, that's a lie. Uh, the reality is bills plus tithes and offering, I always take care of. Right? Now, granted, I probably could cut back to how I give to certain bills. As far as like, right, paying off my credit card balance, things of that nature. I I put in a big like load this go around because I just wanted to take a big chunk out of it. Uh, maybe next paycheck I can, um, you know, maybe not put as much, but still make a significant payment on it. Uh, my car came up. So car expenses did play a part in that car maintenance. Um, another thing was I have recently cut back on eating out and I've been doing a great job about that, but I would say the week before this current week, uh, it was like when it hit, I want to say what Wednesday or no Thursday, Thursday, all the way through Sunday, I just felt like I was eating out. I think Saturday I spared myself, but nevertheless, I was still going to go eat. So there is that. Um, but after figuring out where my money was going, my finances, everything like that, which I did in a um, Google Sheets 
uh, thing, spreadsheet. Uh, usually, right, most of us would use Excel, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't feel like buying that shit. The updated version, because right, if you're gonna buy something, why would I buy like the old three joint? Like that's that's not smart. Uh, so there was that, and it probably wasn't expensive. I just didn't bother. I was like, uh, Google kind of gives you this shit for free, so I'm learning how to use it. So uh, I googled how to make a budget, and uh, Eureka, I did that. So uh, it gave me some hope, man, because. I was able to see how much I could put aside in my savings and then the rest manage it through bills and then the rest could be spending money if I so choose it to be. So there's that. Um, but it's it's giving me hope, I would say, from an insight standpoint, just because uh, I know what I need to do and I see the areas that I can you know, have more freedom in and in areas that I can definitely tighten up in. Right. And that is that on budgeting. But that's not all. You see, in life, we uh, often budget out a lot of things, our money, our time. But um, another thing we budget out that is kind of bizarre. Right. But they really go hand in hand is forgiveness. Right. These two concepts, you're like, well, Ashton, these are light years apart. But I beg to differ. Um, Oftentimes, just like how we budget out our money, our time, we budget out our forgiveness Um, due to how we may feel about others, others, excuse me, or certain situations. We pick and choose who, you know, we let back in our fold and who we, you know, do away with. However, that's not the point. The point is, is that forgiveness is for everybody. Right. And you could be like, well, Ashton, I don't necessarily believe in that. Ashton, I don't agree with that. And that's perfectly fine. But hopefully maybe. I give you a little food for thought in this spiel. Being selective with our forgiveness or budgeting it out per se allows us to be trapped in a never ending cycle of, I would say, fear, anger, frustration, distrust, all of those things. You know, we often um, we often we often withheld our withheld our withhold our forgiveness. Damn, I'm struggling. Withhold our forgiveness um, from others, but we also withhold forgiveness from ourselves. There might be a situation where um, you and maybe forgave the other person they've forgiven you but you haven't forgiven yourself um you beat yourself up about it every single day and that's not how forgiveness works either so i encourage you to be done with that i encourage you to let go of things that may have been plaguing you for days weeks months for some of us maybe even years you know because i feel like to really experience this life and god's blessings yo you gotta let certain things go you know what i mean but like right obviously there's that wall man there's that wall that we, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a motherfucker. The wall is a motherfucker. And let me explain how it is because it prevents us from going to the other side where I personally believe God just has abundant for you. Right. I don't mean to get preachy on this Sunday, but personally, this is me. 
24-7. I'm not forcing anything upon anybody. Um, I respect all creeds, religion, things like that. This is just how I feel. You can disagree. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's all love. Like, bro, you disagree, nigga. I'm not tripping. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like, shit, I look in the mirror and the only person I really be facing is me in this world. And just, you know, just doing my thing and just kicking it with God the best way I can, you know? So uh, there's that. But right, the wall, and it speaks to us, right? Saying typical quotes, man, hell no, nah, they did me wrong. It's, it's fuck you forever, right? You know, you might, the wall might say, man, can you really forgive them for what they did? You know what I mean? Or, right, if it's a situation where you're seeking for forgiveness, man, they'll never forgive you. After what you did, psst, you think you deserve that? You think you think they ever going to really kick it with you? You know what I mean? You're done. You're done. You're dead. You're a waste man. <laughs> okay, that last one was OD. But you know what I mean? You, you get the picture. And I say all of this to say, what's your excuse? Be honest. Let's, let's be real here. What's your excuse? Because it's quite evident that, you know, holding this grudge or holding this thing over your head or holding whatever pain, sadness, or sorrow in your heart is killing you. And I ask you, <laughs> what's your excuse? See, we often carry things in this life that weren't meant for us. It wasn't. You know, oftentimes things should be a one-stop deal, but the human heart and emotions has a way of conveying certain messages and it makes us feel a way. It hurts us oftentimes. Uh, and let me say this. Some things, right, are unforgivable. Some things you can't just pick up and move on. But let me say this. Moving on and sitting in sorrow and sadness, two different things. Now, listen, I will never convey a message of, oh, you know, forgive and forget. You know what I mean? Forgetting would mean that you possibly would allow yourself to fall in a similar situation through ignorance. And then at that point, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm never going to tell you to play the fool. And I'm never going to sit here and be like, oh, everything has to be kumbaya, peachy, creamy. That's not the case either. You could honestly... Say your due diligence and move on, you know. And let me say this, man. I wouldn't be saying this if I wasn't doing my part either. I recently reached out and I asked somebody, man, hey, this is what I did. I'm aware. You know what I'm saying? I messed up. I apologize. I'm sorry. Could you ever forgive me? Uh, I'm not going to tell you uh, the full on response, but it's pending and that's okay. I respect that. Um, I took that. I ate that because you know what? Everybody has their own timetable. Everybody has their own clock and it'll come when it needs to come the most in that situation, man. It's just like how it's important to forgive others. It's important to ask for forgiveness, you know. Now, granted, God already forgave you. Everything's cool under the sun, right? But you still ask him, you know what I'm saying? Because he just wants genuine love. So, but 
you must express and show that genuine love to others, just like as he does to you. You know, I think, do I regret asking? No, because I think it allowed the other person in the situation to express their feelings, their thoughts, and, you know, really get some things that they wanted to off their chest so they can be free. That's the thing about forgiveness. It shouldn't be a prison for anybody. Both parties should be free. And if that is being accomplished, then well, there, it is. there you go. You know what I mean? So um, that's all you that's all you can ever ask for, because a lot of the times, man, like we were so quick to react to what we hear, what we see, what we're experiencing. But sometimes, man, fuck all the extra shit. What does your character say on the situation? How would you really want it? handle the situation see a lot of people scream that they real and that this and that let me say it like this man being let me say this and i'll say this in two different ways spiritually being a follower of god christ the holy spirit it's a call to suffering man oftentimes you got to do some things that you know, you probably might not even want to do in the in real time, but you know you need to. You know what I mean? Just like how being a good person, you might, there might be some times where you really just want to lay into somebody, but you know what? What does your character say about it? You know what I mean? Because character, good character, is going to look at that situation and say, how can both parties move on? How can both people be better? I'm always looking to better myself and the, and the people around me or the people that are directly involved with me. That's some player shit. That's some bullshit. That's the shit that you really want to do. So I say, what's your excuse? Because it's cool to budget out your finances. It's cool to budget out your time. Baby, we got things to do. But your forgiveness, man, be a cheerful giver and give willingly. Not under restriction or compulsion, but what's really on your heart. Because oftentimes, man, we think that, oh, I'll forgive them once I'm over it. Sometimes it's really when you rationalize it and you know when you're really over it. Sometimes we're addicted to holding on to certain things that just ain't meant for us. And, right, we relish in being right. Oh, oh, I, I was right in the situation. I was this, I was that. Okay, what does it matter? In the long term, so what? Because, right, after a couple of months or, hell, even a year, you're going to probably look at the situation and be like, yeah, that shit was tough, but it was like, it doesn't affect me now and I've grown from it. There's a lot of things I've gained from it, you know? So let it go. Let it go and start. Start, start, start that process, man. Maybe it's a process of healing. Maybe it's a process of working on your craft. Maybe it's a process of finding your purpose. Maybe it's a process of being in your purpose. Whatever it is. Let go and start now. <laughs> because if you don't, the game is so foul, man. This life is so foul. You'll end up turning into something that you'll grow to resent. You know, and in this game, you could play the part so long that you end up being the villain. And when that happens, boy, let me tell you, doesn't feel good so i say all of this to say let it go and start anew because man i would hate for one of y'all to really experience that you know what i'm saying because sometimes not all of us can really bounce back from it so if i can help you avoid a path 
or go down the wrong road, I'm going to help you deter from it. Because, man, at the end of the day, y'all, it's all love. Well, I'm ending this at 11.31 a.m. on October 16th. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and listening. Uh, I'm going to drop this next Wednesday. And um, hopefully, not hopefully, I will bring you another episode afterwards. Trying to stay consistent. Uh, But yeah, man. Um, y'all have a blessed Sunday. Y'all have an even blessed, an even more blessed week. Um, and may that ride into your weekend. And until we shit meet again, peace, y'all.